talking with the experts. Hello and welcome to Talking with the Experts. My name's Rose Davidson. As their name suggests, my guests, experts in their field, and I dive deeply into topics relevant to businesses large or small. It could be SEO or marketing, HR management or social media management. Talking with the experts is all things business by business owners for business owners. I know a lot of business owners are challenged with different aspects of their enterprises and I saw this as a way of having experts address those challenges. This is not to say that what is said is the gospel, far from it. It is merely one person's perspective on their chosen topic. So, why a podcast? I believe that most people are time poor these days. Most just don't have the time to read a book or watch a video. They could, however, find the time to listen to a 30-minute or less podcast, whether it's driving to work, doing the dishes, or going for a walk. Just plug in the headphones and off you go. Talking with the experts. (laughs) Hello and welcome to Talking with the Experts. My name is Rose Davidson from rosedavidson.com and my guest today is Jerry Morris and he is from Book Speakers Direct and Jerry's a really great friend of mine. And um, Jerry's been involved in the professional speaking industry since um, 2001 and um, he has had the joy of working with an array of wonderful, inspiring speakers and fabulous clients. It was 16 years of experience of booking speakers and four years of running events. He knows firsthand both sides of the speaking and events industry. And in 2018, he created Book Speakers Direct to be an alternative way for clients to deal with Speakers Direct and then came along the world pandemic. Welcome, Jerry. Thank you for coming on. Oh, absolute pleasure to be here, Rose. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Yes, Book Speakers Direct is really a great platform for speakers and um and those wanting to get online i know that we uh, collaborated early this year to get a huge event going in south australia which was very well received um can you just tell me a little bit more about um how the speakers in that i guess area you know received the event and um how it's helped their businesses all right yeah lovely as um yeah thanks for the chance to chat about that it was for myself, um, that essay bounce and back event came about because just needed answers, you know, for the events industry and for speakers, there's not exactly a helpline, you know, it's gone like, when, when's things going to get better? Um, you know, when, when can we get back on stage? What's happening with the events industry? So I thought, <clears throat> well, how about we get uh, a bunch of great speakers together and also some CEOs and um real decision makers within the industry and bring their expertise together. So I'm a great believer is that on one side of the events industry, you've got uh, the events people and on the other side, you got the speakers. So it's all about like bringing them together. So I'm all about collaboration. So when I asked certain people, would they be involved? I loved the enthusiasm behind it. Same as yourself, Rose, like with the team behind it. You know, everybody said, yes, this needs to happen. You know, people needed answers. Um, so, yeah, everybody just, anybody approached or said, yes, would love to be. So for the speakers there, obviously, we had Charlene Lintz, the fabulous uh, Charlene. And we had uh, Gary Edwards, who I thought did an amazing job on the day. Mm. Um, and we also had Derek McManus, the, the, the Star Force officer that was shot 14 times. Yeah, so, they've all been on the podcast. So, yeah, yeah it's been great. Yeah, exactly. Oh, your guests, so they, you know, uh, no thing or two about resilience. Definitely with Charlene and uh, with Derek. And and again, going back to Gary, I thought he was uh, exceptional because he had three roles and he had the um, to be the MC and the host of the event. And then he was a presenter himself. And then he also did a fantastic job as the facilitator and asking the CEOs um, some very poignant questions. So just quickly on that, we had um, the head of Adelaide Convention uh, Center, uh, Simon Burgess. And then we also had the head of the National Wine Center, which is a beautiful venue here in Adelaide. And we had um, the head of 
tourism, the, no, the speakers, sorry, not speakers, but we had the tourism bureau people, a convention bureau. And we also had two amazing ladies who ran uh, very large events companies. So we got them in to share theirs. So I think for the speakers, it was an opportunity to speak to camera, which is a whole different ball game, of course. And again, that's why I think Gary did really well because you know, there's one thing of what walking on stage and there's an audience and you feed off them as compared to looking down the camera and remembering your lines and getting it right each time. And I forgot that I'd really, Gary hadn't been in that position. <laughs> you know? So I thought he did terrific. And, yeah, and again, when it came to facilitating, he did a wonderful job of asking the questions. So I think that was good. And that was also a good way to showcase the speakers. You know, just to say, okay, we can't bring speakers in and we have great speakers right here on our doorstep. So let's have a look at what we've got. You know, a lot of times people forget just how good, um, how far, how good things are right under your nose, mm. you know? So I was like, that was a good chance to showcase the speakers. Yeah, and it was a really great event. And I know that we had a lot of people um, watching online. So, yeah. Um, and yeah, it promoted um, uh, SA, I guess, uh, the events sector in, in, a, in a good light, which was, you know, really great because a, a lot of people outside of um, the events arena, you know, didn't really know um, what happens behind the scenes. And that, yeah, so it, it gave them a glimpse of what, what um, you know, the work that goes on behind the scenes to to get an event going, and yeah, it was it was quite good. So tell me a little bit more about Book Speakers Direct and and um, you know why you started it and uh, you know what entails for a speaker to become involved. Ah, all right, yeah, I almost feel like it's a shameless plug for me talking about my business. Ah, no, that's why you're here. <laughs> that's why Oh, funny enough, like it's like a quick history lesson that comes to it. Um, you know, there is about 20 years experience behind it. And um, my wife, Donna, Donna Morris, who's really the brains behind it all, is um, we've been in a partnership. Uh, we actually lived here in South Australia. We were moving to Queensland right back in 2001. And um, we find out about this speaking industry by our friend. We knew absolutely nothing about it, you know, other than going to a couple of events ourselves and got thrown in the deep end when we got to Queensland. I like to joke that the fun part was is like, well, I joke about it now, but not at the time. But we thought we we're going to be dealing with all these celebrities and well-known uh, legends of sport and the likes. Um, and we got the phones all set up in our home office. You know, day one, it didn't ring. Day two, it didn't ring. You know, day three, I'm going to tell so going, like, have you connected the right numbers? You know, <laughs> why, is, why is nobody calling? And then soon realized that nobody knew about us. No, no, nobody knew about that company that we were working at the time. So we were very fresh and green. And yeah, it was a big learning curve. And as the saying goes, you always remember your first time. Is that uh, I remember an inquiry came through and somebody wanted one of the Brisbane newsreaders to um, host an event. And then I was thinking, I'm in Sunshine Coast. So I was getting regional television and not getting Brisbane television. So uh, I'd phoned up Channel 9 <laughs> and Channel 7, but say Channel 9 was the first one I called and said, look, again, with this accident of mine, this broken Irish one, I said, uh, look, we're new to the country. <laughs> and my son's doing a school project. Um, who reads the news for you? And they, they told me, you know, there was, um, I think it was Heather Ford at the time. And uh, next thing I put down the phone, picked it up again and said, uh, can I speak to Heather Ford, please? And they just put me through. <laughs> and I was going, okay, that went well. <laughs> wow. Yeah, next thing. But then when I, and I think it was Bruce Page as well. But oh, then, yeah, I remember Bruce Page. Bruce, yeah. Bruce Page, lovely man, lovely man. He's still in the phone book. Um, oh, sorry, in my in my yeah, um, yeah, and so when I was speaking to him and they tell him what the event was all about, and next thing we're off and running, and uh, you know, like I love my sport, and there's uh, Lee Matthews was always a hero of mine growing up, and um, I had a job potential job for him, and I called him one time, and it was, oh, hello, Mr. Matthews, it's Jerry Morris here from blah blah blah, 
And uh, that all went well and got them this uh, speaking gig. And then the second time I called them and uh, same voice, you know, hello, Mr. Matthews. Oh, g'day, Jerry. And I go, oh, hang on. I said, I'm not the only Irishman you know. <laughs> you're the only one who's got my bloody mobile number. I was like, ah. <laughs> yeah, and you just treat people normal. That was the big uh, secret for me. Uh, the big learning curve, treat people as if how you want to be treated. And, and on we went, you know. And then I also realized that Lee didn't mind hearing from me. You know, every time he heard, from, he got a call from me. I meant it was about $6,000 went in his pocket. So it was got like, I was going, oh, there's a bit of a power shift here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, we went about it. It was a huge learning curve. Um, yeah, and we got to deal with some amazing speakers and great clients. And uh, just while I go off on my funny stories, that thing, there was, um, it was a late on a Friday, I think it was, and it was a phone call and it was for Donna. It was a gentleman on the other line, you know, and late in the day, and I'm sorry, like Donna's not here. You know, um, and then I started joking with him, going like, the truth of it is, Donna always leaves, and I have to do all the work, you know, just having a bit of fun. And he goes, I hear you, and we're chatting away. And I said, oh, look, by the way, who will I say is calling? And he goes, oh, it's Goff Whitlam. <laughs> I was like, really? <laughs> I was like standing up straight. Oh, wow. Yeah. And we end up having a great chat. There was, uh, there was a case of he was telling me, look, Jerry, I'm getting on in my years and I don't remember long speeches. So I'm pretty good for like cutting ribbons and waving and a couple of lines. Oh, look, don't worry, Mr. Whitlam. I'll, oh, I'll make sure everybody knows like not to do this. But yeah, that was a real treat. You know? Wow. And I, and I think like a big kid, I like I hung up and goes, who am I going to tell? So I called my mum. Oh, that's really exciting news yeah. though. Wow. Oh, it was. So, yeah, it's, and we got to deal with some amazing people along the way. You know, there was one time, yeah, so there was uh, executive PAs were having a huge conference and they wanted a, a PA who's had to, work with somebody in a very high role, very high demand, you know, and, and, and a bit stressful and how do you get around that? And lo and behold, I actually got uh, Nelson Mandela's PA, um, Zelda Lagrange, her name is. You know, I tracked her down and the client was happy for the pair to come to Canberra and whatnot. And, you know, like one of my favorite human beings ever. And, uh, and I felt close to greatness you know, it was like, oh, my God. And uh, but it was, she was quite funny. She had a very stern personality, which wasn't funny. And it took a while to break that down. I was going, you're, break, you're, you're ruining the fuzziness of this for me. <laughs> <laughs> but I could imagine her in real life. She would have had make tough decisions. You know, Mr. Mandela would have probably said, yes, yes, yes. And she was going, no, no, no. <laughs> and after, like, a few communications with her, I got a chuckle in and we got on pretty well. And that was all very cool. Oh, wow. What an exciting life you have. So awesome. tell me how Book Speakers Direct actually works. Yeah. So that's that's the question you asked in a sense. So I just wanted to give it a bit of history where, you know, there's 20 years that have gone into this and we looked at what speakers like and what they don't like. And there was things what I liked as being a, a bureau person and as a, uh, speaking consultant and there was things that I didn't like you know there was things like having to play favorites and exclusives you know these are our exclusives so only sell them um when I'd always thought that there might be somebody else who's better for the job and then other bureaus or agencies go no they're ours you can't play with them and you're and thinking like that's human beings you know they're not yours and they're not that you can't play with them they're not like Ken and Barbie dolls, you know, this one no. or whatever. So I wanted to change things. And uh, yeah, there was one night I might have had a Guinness or two. And uh, and it just started coming to me, you know, what if we did the opposite? Because we look at companies who do the opposite, the very opposite of what's out there. And it seems to work. If you look at Airbnb or Uber, you know, they do the opposite. You know, or... Um, Another good one for us as part of that learning was, um, oh, where, where do you go for booking your flights direct? Like Webjet. 
Yeah. Okay. So uh, there's some people who want to go to a consultant, a travel consultant, and have their hand held and through the process. And there's others who just go, I know what I want, I know what I'm looking for, and I'll look at things that's within my range, and then I'll deal with that thing direct. So that's where we're starting to play in my head is going, yeah, give people the opportunity to deal with them direct. Because, uh, yeah, I like, again, when I was consulting, if I thought somebody was perfect for that client, if I was thinking like, this lady is your ideal presenter, and they'll be going, oh, I don't know, and going, let me set up a conversation. You talk to them, you know, and you'll see why I think that that person just right for you. And that always worked. But my old employers used to think, you can't do that. You know, you can't like have them talk to each other. They always wanted to keep that distance. And I thought, well, if they're going to put them in front of their audience, their staff, you know, 100, 300, 500 people, they're going to want to talk to them somewhere along the lines. You know, so why not start it at the beginning? And uh, so every time that the speaker and the client would chat, you know, I'd speak to them the day after. How'd the call go? Oh, they'd phone me straight away and go, oh, my God, lock them in. You know, that's, and we see what you mean, perfect for us. You know, and, and I was going, there it is again, like book direct, you know, click the speakers, and it's probably going back to like the uh, essay bouncing back. It's uh, a bit like a clattering, you know, so there's the heart in the middle and the two hands, and just bring the two parties together and make it easier. So again, how does book speakers direct work is by showing the contact details. So nearly every other agency is directed to calling them, you know, so that this person has control of the conversation and who they should suggest and who they can recommend. Now, it's also some people are absolutely fantastic at that. And I pride myself uh, on being knowledgeable and Donna's very knowledgeable and think who's right. So we can provide that service as well for people. But um, yeah, so ours is the opposite. Here's the phone number. Here's the email address. So if they're interested in that speaker, they fit the category of what they want, um, even fit in their budget because we show uh, the price of the speakers as compared to anybody else. So it's about showing here's the contact details. Here's their uh, social media platforms. You go to their website. Everything that this uh, potential client needs is there on our webpage. And they can deal with them direct, or they can give us a buzz or drop us an email going, can you find out if they're available or not, if they don't want to make that contact. But yeah, it was about like that opposite. Here we are, deal with them direct. Um, and then we had a subscription model, so that's very different. Is speakers, unjustifiably, would be thinking, why should I pay you, Jerry? <laughs> You know, why, why should I be giving you my money when there's no guarantee of work? Which makes you know, good sense too. But uh, we look at it, it's a marketing platform and you've got to get yourself out there. You know, it's a bit like if you're going to sell your house, there's one or two websites you're going to go to. If you're selling your car, there's one or two websites you're going to go to. And everybody just goes there. So we're going to build this. And we started building it. <laughs> and it was all going pretty well. And, um, you know, there's this bit of a COVID flu thing going on in. Uh, so that way of, of doing things for us, which is very Irish, which is doing the opposite, you know. Here's all the contact details. The speakers want to be here. And here's the opportunity for speakers to engage with the client from the very beginning. And also not have to rely on a third party remembering them and yeah. how to sell them and what uniqueness that they can bring. Because a lot of times with a client, it might just be one little thing. You know, it might be that speaker has gone like, oh, yeah, I used to work for KPMG or something. Oh, you'll know what their system's like. And that's the thing, you know, which a consultant would never remember all that detail. Mm. So, yeah, so do the opposite. Go figure with me. And, um, yeah, build it, they will come, a bit like for yourself, what's happening with the latest news that's coming your way. I won't break it now. You can let you do that later. Yeah, I will later. Yeah, do that later. But yeah, so it sat there with me. I thought I was a genius. You know, I was up all night till about three in the morning, scribbling all down. And then it took a while before I shared it with a speaker to see what he thought. And uh, he said, you might want to check out a company in the States. Right, which is e-speakers. 
And I went to East Speakers and I felt a bit deflated. <laughs> I wasn't I wasn't quite the genius I thought I was, you know, that sometimes things nothing is new, you know. And I was like, oh Yeah, but you put the Jerry spin on it, which is, yeah. you know. Yeah, thank you. And the big difference though, when I looked at them again, because I was deflated for a while and then I pumped my tires back up and realized that they actually still control the conversation. So contact the speaker goes via them and then they send it on to the client and tell them what the response was and it goes that's not what i want you know i mm. want direct contact straight away so they can just get on with it so i was ties all pumped up again i thought no nah, i'm gonna do this and um yeah things were happening with the bureau i worked with and you go i don't want to do this you know and i want to do my own thing and um, I wanted to roll that 20 years of experience into something new. And uh, yeah, so we got started and that damn COVID thing came along. Yes, so bloody COVID. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, are you planning any more major events like SA Bouncing Back? Yeah, we started looking into that. And uh, there's, because we'd like to think we were the first to do that. You know, we were then, honestly, we were. We, we absolutely were, Rose. And we slayed it. Yeah, slayed it. And then a few other people come along going, Oh, this is what we'll do. Um, and it's interesting where I will most likely we'll do it again. Um, I think it's time for a follow up because one of the big things that came out of that for me was um, Jason at the National Wine Center there. He was saying, Look, you know, you plan, you plan, you plan, and then the goalposts get moved. And you plan, you plan, and bang, the goalposts get moved. And back then, when I think it was maybe July when we held this event, mm. uh, it was like I was feeling that the light at the end of the tunnel was just that bit brighter, and, and we were getting there. You know, like we had X amount of great days here in South Australia. Yeah, you did for a long time, and then yeah, yeah, restrictions were coming down. You know, restaurants are starting to open again. You know, you start thinking, like obviously there's the uh, social distancing. So, if you wanted a com conference for a hundred people, you probably need a venue for like two to three hundred people. Yeah. yeah. So, but uh, there was still there was light, you know, and then we have gone, yay, we're going to get back to normal. And then we had the Victorian breakout, you know, and what happens in Victoria and Sydney has a ripple effect all across the country. Yes. Yeah. So that slowed things down again. And then, then like, lo and behold, we've had a, a night break on the weekend here and now we find ourselves in lockdown for six days. Yeah, but, it's unfortunate, but uh, I'm, I'm glad it's been, um, you know, Honestly, they've got onto it really quickly this time. So, yeah, yeah. They, they haven't let it uh, get out of hand. But, I, you know, I was, um, I know that there were a lot of comments from um, other event people, you know, like band, bands and singers and so forth. And, you know, they were a little bit disappointed that they weren't, um, be, uh, you know, included, I guess, or they felt a little yeah. bit excluded from you know what was happening so um you know what are your thoughts on on that for the next event yeah well look interesting is that my world is speakers so that's why mm. i'm not speakers you know there was a few people who goes oh what about wedding events you know, and i go well that's not my specialty either no. so but at the same time i have massive feels for musicians and entertainers because Oh, I spoke to a fabulous guy from a band and like his whole life is centered on entertaining people. You know, like every weekend he's playing somewhere, maybe twice that weekend and getting on stage and having a lot of fun and sending out that energy and everybody's bouncing off it. You know, they're dancing mm. and having a good time. And then that just stopped, you know, and like, because what do I do now, you know? Yeah. Um, and it is, it's, it's soul destroying. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, everything's got to be hybrid now. I think. I mean, yeah. even for speakers, they they need to be hybrid. You know, they just can't rely on in person no. um, events anymore. They have to, you know, be able to um, go online, and they just have to learn how to do it and do it Absolutely. comfortably. 
It's uh, yeah. unfortunate. And so how is um, the new um, um, speaker module going? Ah, yes. Yep. So it's funny because I was going to say, like, you'll be one of the first to know this. So I thought I'd give a little world exclusive for this chat. And this is a world exclusive. It will be. Yeah, it will be. It certainly will be. Is all right, so what you're asking about is speaker engine. Yes. So yes. So a biggie for us, um, and it's a good learning curve. Um, and again, going back to saying how can we do things differently? And as you've just mentioned, hybrid, what's the new future gonna look like? You know, as presenters have to get online, like even for myself, we've just bought some new lights, you know, the sign's gotta be right. Um, speakers have got to stop having the laptop look up their nose and chin. Yes. <laughs> you know, just like, for the love of God, don't do that. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's a whole new ball game. It's almost like going back to Gary of like this whole talking to camera. Yeah. Um, it's like, and you've got to own it or some great guys like uh, Warwick Merry there. Who's oh, yeah, isn't he fabulous? Just the best guy. I know, but as he said to me, he's going, he's using some of his best material to the camera. You know, there's, he, he hopes they're laughing at the other end. Yeah. Going, and you've just got to play through that. you got to go, yeah, that will be funny. They'll like that and just bring the energy. So you've got to bring the energy. You know, that's so important because people can sit in the chairs, get distracted, put you on mute, you know, head off, oh, my camera's not working, all that sort of thing. So that's why I think it's got to be shorter with more impact. Um, as compared to a keynote, you can be at a keynote and 45 minutes can fly by. But once you're sort of sitting, just glued to the telly kind of thing or the computer screen, it's a different ball game. Yep. So I think everything's changed. I think another wonderful speaker is Ian Stephen. And he called this a time almost like an intermission, but it even changed the rung on an intermission. So we really want to have taken this time to have a good look at our offerings and what we can do coming out the other side. And I like to think that it's almost like a new starting line. You know, some things you don't want to go back to the way they were, and some things we bust in, you know. We'll never go back to the way we were, ever. Nah, it's going to take some time, maybe with vaccines and the like. But yeah, you know, if it all gets, yeah. So we've got to think differently, you know. And interestingly, we're working with a couple of speakers who have never embraced digital um, and have never had to. You know, like um, work has always just kept on coming. You know, it's like our, our conference is coming up, this conference coming up, and people handing things to them on a platter. And uh, and that sort of stuff. You know, we've seen speakers' income just crash, mm. burn, and just come to a standstill. Again, very difficult. You, you think of some speakers who were doing particularly well, you know, might have gone and bought a nice house and... Uh, you know, and now the bank's going, well, now you have to pay for it. You know, yeah. What's happened to my income? Um, so they're looking at reinventing themselves. And the only way to do that is digital and getting on board, on, sorry, online and using every tool possible to, to get an audience. So going back to like, so we, we were dealing with a lovely guy called Josh. He was our digital uh, marketing partner and far more technical savvy than I'll ever, ever be. <laughs> and yeah, let's not kid ourselves. You and me both, yeah. yeah. You know, but it was a case of um, what else can we do, Josh? Like, how can speakers get themselves out there? How can they get more people looking at them and finding what their offering is? So we wanted, even with the book speakers direct, we're a directory, you know? So it was like, what else can we give clients? You know, what more? What something like almost tangible, like they can work with. So, yeah, Josh goes, well, I'm actually working on something, and and it fit it perfectly, you know. So now, speakers have got to look at landing pages, you know. They've got to look at um, how they communicate with clients because some speakers that I've known for like 20 years didn't even have a CRM. Wow. And he goes, I oh, know. And he's going, oh, those speakers, oh, but that client moves on. You go. But that's your opportunity to call them and go, well, who's not there? You know, and then you update your CRM. <laughs> you yeah. know? And they go, never had to do that before, but <laughs> now we have to. So we wanted like marketing software, which is what Josh has created with speakerengine.com. Um, and there's like a world of uh, 
like there's about five, six, seven, eight apps all rolled into one. You know, like for those who are a lot more tech savvy than I, they love it because it's like a one-stop shop yeah. marketing package. You know, like quite often as happens in the digital world, one app doesn't talk to the other and then you got to go do this, take that out, put it in here, where this here has it all. You know, and it'll have things like two-way um, text messaging, marketing. You know, you can be sending something like their clients on their phone, they come back to it and you start communicating with them straight away from here. Um, just so many opportunities, unlimited landing pages, courses, you know, so for speakers who want to run their courses online. In fact, that's the webinar we finished earlier today with this fabulous lady, um, Angela McMillan. Do you know Angela? Yes, I do know Angela, yeah. Yeah. So Angela was doing very well with what the different apps that she was working with. But she loves Speaker Engine because it's all in that one place that I mentioned. So she's transferring everything into Speaker Engine. Oh, terrific. Yeah. So what we're going forward is going to be the Book Speakers direct Directory and Speaker Engine. And people can add them together. Mm -hmm. So you get your directory and you also get the software. And that comes in a light and a pro. So for those who are all across it, we'll want to go down the pro. And for those who just want to get started, there'll be the light package. And the world exclusive, little drum roll that I mentioned. Yes. Yeah, yes. Is that we have gone to reduce the price of Book Speakers Direct uh, in a big way because Phil Wright and I, the most important thing is to get work again. You know, get speakers to work. Um, and we're going to make it like $500 plus GST and then get on our directory. You know? Wow, gonna, that's good. Yeah, we just wanted to make a no-brainer, got to be doing this. You know, so they, they get on with the Book Speakers Direct, they can have their web page on there. So it's almost like a mini website. You know, we'll have all the details and have videos. The show reel can be on there, uh, pictures, what people will take away from it. We're very pleased with the type of page that people get as compared to what else might be out there for a bureau where it gives the client opportunity to call you straight away and for $500 for the year. It's, wow, the year that is a good price. Yeah, it's, it's a bit of a no-brainer. So we want to kick help people kickstart 2021 and beyond. So we're thinking if anybody's in that planning mode about I want to get my life together <laughs> after this COVID, is that, um, yeah, we want to meet the market, help people out, and then the software packaging that starts from $1,500 a month, which includes the Book Speakers direct directory as well. So, and we can do it like for $150 a week, that sort of thing. And then for those who are the tech savvy and want to go pro, that's $3,000 for the year. And when we have compared that to things like Kajabi and other platforms, that you would normally be paying about 5,000 plus for that. And Things are limited where everything with us is unlimited on that side of it. So we're excited about, and it's actually a world first. Yeah, it you know, is. It's, yeah, it's that's got the Jerry like, spin. <laughs> but yeah, like, and, and, and what we are very proud of, it, it genuinely is. So nobody has ever come up with like a directory and marketing software. No. It's all about giving you as many tools as possible. Um, yeah, and it gives everybody a fresh chance. I know, and I get my little posse on there as well. So yeah, and soon we'll be adding your new news to it. <laughs> All right, my darling. Well, thank you so much. You okay. have been an absolute delight. And um and um yeah I it, congratulations on um on the new platform because uh, I know it will be just as engaging and as successful as um your book speakers direct. Thank you so much, Rose. Really right, appreciate we'll talk this. Talk soon. All right, take care. Bye. Bye.